the striker kicks a soccer ball towards the goal. Okay, the velocity diminishes from 41 meters per second to 27 meters per second. If its mass is 413 grams, how much energy was lost due to friction and air resistance? Okay, and here you just see how awesome this uh, formula is that we have that the work that is being applied is equal to, um, first of all, does it um, how much work applied goes into uh, overcoming friction, then it goes into changing the potential energy, and then it goes, whatever is left over goes into changing the kinetic energy. Now I know when the striker kicked the ball, he was applying a force to the ball, but now the velocity diminishes from 41 meters per second to 27, so it's after he's kicked the ball, and now the ball uh, it's short. Okay, now here we have the ball. Okay, traveling on the grass. Okay, towards the goal post. Okay, so there's the soccer goal post. While it's traveling on the ground, there is no forces other than friction acting on it, as well as gravity. So we have gravity and friction acting on this ball, and that is what we need to go and calculate. Is how much work was lost due to friction. In other words, we want to calculate the work done by the frictional force, that part. Now, work applied, there's no work being applied. There was work applied, but there's now no work being applied. Okay, there's no force acting on it. Here's the work done by the frictional force. That is what we are trying to calculate. Okay, next. What is its change in potential energy? Assume the ball never leaves the ground. It is not, uh, and we know that a soccer field is flat in most, most cases. Okay, so it doesn't change height, so the change in potential energy is zero. What's the change in kinetic energy? Okay, we have that initially, we have that as a half mass. Mass is uh, 413 grams, which is 0, 0.413 kilograms times velocity, that's the initial velocity, no, final velocity is 27 meters per second squared and minus, okay, so let me just write out the formula so that you know what I'm doing. We have mass times future velocity minus a half mass times initial velocity, okay, in, <laughs> well, what am I doing, okay, here we go. Okay, and then we have minus a half mass 0, 0,413 times 27 squared. This is, sorry, that's now 41. Sorry, 41 was its initial velocity. There we go. That's initial velocity. That's final velocity. Velocity in the past, velocity in the future. So we take future minus initial. And then what do we get? So just simplifying this formula a little bit, we have zero on the one side, work frictional force on this side, and then here, what do we have as a value there? Let's go and see. Okay. We have 0 0.5 times 0 0.413 times 27 squared. Okay minus 0.5 times 0.413 times 41 squared. Okay, what do we get? Negative 196.59. Negative 196,59. Okay, so now if we add this on both sides, then we've worked out the amount of work that was stolen from the applied work that was done. Okay, so we have that the frictional force is stealing, and here you can see clearly there's no applied work done, so the work that's being applied is not enough to overcome friction, so the work that's needed to overcome friction is being stolen from the kinetic energy that the ball has, and that amount is 196,59 joules. And that's it. Beautiful question.